So, hello friends. So, as a part of snippet series, I, I thought it would I do a bit of a snippet on certain newer antifungals which are still not in the market. So, I gather this was asked in the DRNP exam as a question, newer antifungals. Uh, so, friends, as you know, when you look at the armamentarium of antifungal agents, today we have mainly three categories. So, we have azoles, so we have sterols, which is mainly apotricin B, and we have echinocandins. But the type of fungi that are affecting humans at this point of time, with an advances in intensive care, with the type of immunosuppression, with the type of oncological uh, progression that are happening and transplants, so it's very hard for us to delineate that we have one agent which can cover only candida species or some agent which can cover only the molds and some agents which have a bit of a cover on candida or is. So, so the, we are sort of compartmentalized with that aspect. So we don't have one antifungal agent which can sort of cover the whole spectrum of candida, molds, and other resistant fungi. So we need some newer antibiotics. So that's the context setting. So given that standpoint, this particular drug, Forstmanogepix, holds some promise for candida and for the molds and for the aspergillus, so on and so forth. So that's the sort of a context setting why these new antifungals are coming. So let's straight away jump into, there's not much literature on this Forstmanogepix, so let's look into the mechanism of action, which seems to be interesting. So it's a prodrug, like cholestine, it's a prodrug, and uh, it gets converted into the active moiety called manogepix in the presence of systemic phosphatases, convert phosphatases to manogepix. So that is the sort of a active moiety. <clears throat> and when you look at uh, the mechanism of actions, uh, so there is an enzyme called GWT1 in the fungi, which converts inositol to glycosyl phosphatidyl inositol anchor, so GPA. So basically, GWT1 enzyme, which is present in the fungi, cleverly converts this inositol to GPA. Because why it converts? Because it needs this anchor to create, it, it acts as an anchorage for manoproteins. So this is a very clever thing that fungi does. And these manoproteins are needed for the fungi to adhere to the mano protein receptors that are present on the human cells. So basically, there is a whole sort of a trafficking of these manoproteins that tends to happen. So this is a fungus, friends. So some fungus, it can be cryptococcus, it can be aspergillus. And all these red dots that you see are all the manoproteins. So basically, the fungal produces these enzymes. Cleverly, it converts inositol to glycosyl GPI, glycosyl phosphatidyl inositol which acts as an anchorage to the manoproteins and helps in the trafficking of this manoprotein and gets attached to these fungal cells. And uh, this leads to, and all these uh, red spots, helps in the anchoraging or attachment of this fungi to these receptors, which are called the manoprotein receptors. So fungi can gain attachment to the cell surface with the help of these manoreceptors, for these manoproteins are needed. That's why it's called manogepix. So it's easy to remember. So the mechanism of action is more on anchorage of manoproteins and trafficking of these manoproteins, which are needed for the attachment of the fungi to the manoprotein receptor. So that's, in essence, the mechanism of action. So manogepix inhibits this GWT. So by inhibiting this GWT, this anchorage of manoprotein does not happen. And this trafficking of these manoproteins does not happen. So all these red dots that you see, which are needed, for attaching the fungi to the manoprotein receptors does not happen. So what happens pictorially? So basically, manogopix blocks this uh, trafficking of these manoproteins or transport of these manoproteins into the fungi to create attachment to the cell wall. So what happens? So this is what happens. See, if you see this very nicely, once manogopix is given, so fungi loses all these manoproteins. So because there is no manoproteins which are needed to attach to these manoproteins receptors, it loses the morphology. So fungi gets very distorted and becomes very dysfunctional. So very interesting mechanism of action for all my advanced trainees. So in exams, of these are, just put this picture. It is very, very uh, it becomes, uh, gives the conceptual understanding and have a good clarity. So it basically it leads to dysfunction of the fungi by distorting the structure of the fungal cell wall. So the, mainly altering the morphology. So that's the quintessence of mechanism of this manogepix. So when you look at the spectrum of activity, as I said, friends, I think we have limited antifungal agents 
which are very specific. Like if you have aspergillus, you can give oriconazole. And if you have cryptococcus, you have amphotericin. If you have candida auris, you have uh, echinocandins. So, but we need a fungal which can cover wide spectrum. So this is like a uh, like a carpet bombing sort of a antifungal. So it covers candida, it covers albicans, sauris, and glabretta. But uh, it is unique that it does not have effect against candida cruzi. Then it has effect against cryptococcus because if you have crypto, see now the reason we need these antifungals is because of all the transplant and all the morbidities that are happening. You need one fungal agents which covers this wide spectrum. Then it covers aspergillus because for aspergillus now the drug of choice is only oriconazole but maybe these newer drugs you have coverage of candida and aspergillus and fusarium it covers on the molds fusarium and it covers coccidiotes and it covers other rarer fungi species like lamentospora prolificans but of course it has limitations it does not cover candida cruzi so this is in essence the spectrum of action on the antifungal agents at this point of time phosmanogepics has and like in most antifungals we talk about or antibiotics, we talk about minimum inhibitory concentration. For phosmenogepics, we call it as minimum effective concentration, which means the lowest concentration which is needed to alter the morphology. As I said, it does not inhibit or kill the fungi. It changes the morphology of the fungi and makes it dysfunctional. And the fungi cannot attach to the cell because of the lack of nanoproteins which are unavailable for it to bind to the manoprotein receptors. Uh, and it does not inhibit the growth or, or uh, any of these fungi. So it is more of minimum effective concentration that we speak about and not minimum inhibitory concentration. And it's a new drug. It's not available worldwide anywhere. So FDA is doing fast tracking to make it available. Phase 1 and 2 trials uh, has been conducted. Uh, as you know, friends, phase one and two trials are to look at the safety of the drug and adverse reactions. It was well tolerated and there were no major adverse effects. So in that way, it has passed through phase one and phase two trials. Right now, phase three trials are happening on this first nanogepics, so which is a good thing. So that so it's a well tolerated drug and there is no nephrotoxicity for this particular drug, which means it is very safe to be used in the kidney uh, in the CKD patients or ATI patients. So in that way, it has very distinctive advantages. And when you look at the dose uh, dosing, it is a little peculiar. So it's one gram twice a day needs to be given, followed by because all this dosage uh, sort of a regimen has arrived from the mouse models where they have used this drug. So one gram IV breathe, followed by 600 mg once a day for two days, following which it is meant to be de-escalated to the oral drugs pretty soon at 800 mg once a day orally. So this is a unique sort of a uh, dosage regimen based on the rat studies that they have deduced. So 1 gram once a day followed by 600 mg once a day for 2 days and try to de-escalate to oral is what has been suggested. And it has shown 80% success rate in clearing candidemia uh, in initial sort of a studies that they have done. And it has a good synergy with amphotericin B and it is proposed that it could be used as a combination in difficult to treat resistant fungal infections or in a, in a very refractory fungal infections. This could be considered as a combination with amphotericin has been sort of suggested. So when you look at the ongoing studies, so I was trying to see if I can get some uh, material from the ongoing studies. So there are two studies. One is an APEX study, uh, which is uh, where this uh, manogepics is being trialed for candida auris and then there is this age study so age study is being done in basically aspergillus and other molds like mucorins and fusarium and uh, age study they had to stop uh, early on before the conclusion they had recruited around 300 because they wanted to move towards phase 3 trials very quickly and uh, so we we are we have to keenly await to see the results of this study. So these are the two studies you can keep in mind, FX study and AG study. And FDA is on the fast track to make this available soon in the markets because of this potency and uh, reasonable effectiveness of this particular drug. So right now, if you look at the information friends, I think this is all we have. So mainly the mechanism of action is interesting. So the name don't get intimidated by the name for manogepics because the reason mano is because manoproteins. I think if you remember that, it mainly acts by preventing the trafficking of these manoproteins and anchorage by GPI1 
and uh, and changing the morphology of the fungi is the is the primordial action and the dosage is something you have to remember and minimum effective concentration is what needs to be spoken about not about minimum inhibitory and good thing is the spectrum of activity it acts against candida cryptococci aspergillus and molds i think that is the uniqueness of this organism so thank you friends that's all we have information at this point of time post monographics i'll talk few snippets on the other newer interesting antifungals so request you all to submit valuable work to journal of acute care of course you can visit my website to react to this lecture thank you thank you very much